Hey friends, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you haven't heard yet, I just found out recently that I have Lyme disease and my doctor is trying to help me get it under control by helping me change my diet, giving me some supplements and things like that. So today's video, I'm gonna be going over all of the foods that I am trying to eat, what I'm trying to avoid, and um, how that's working out for me. So you're gonna get some good recipe ideas. These will be low carb, low sugar, high protein recipes. And hopefully um, they'll be able to help you guys out if you're looking for new recipe ideas. So come hang out with me today and let's get started. So this is my first grocery haul with my new diet. It is mostly vegetables and um, berries I'm allowed to have. I have to watch my sugar so I can't have most fruit right now, but I'm allowed to have berries. So I got some organic carrots, got some cauliflower, organic lettuce, um, got some portobello mushrooms, some white mushrooms, some baby cucumbers, um, some uh, zucchini. Now we live in a small town, so our Walmart doesn't have quite as many options for organic as um, some bigger cities, but I did what I could with organic and what I couldn't get organic, I just bought, you know, regular. But um, got two things of Brussels sprouts, some strawberries, some blackberries, a couple of those, got some raspberries, an extra thing of raspberries for the kids because you have to share, you know, <laughs> blueberries. Um, I got the apple cider vinegar with the mother in it, which is the uh, good bacteria that you need. Also got organic extra virgin olive oil. And my doctor told me, check to get a brand that is only produced in one country. Don't get one that's from like a whole bunch of different countries all combined because of how quickly it goes rancid. You don't want it traveling from country to country to country before it gets to you. So um, this one was only from Spain. So I grabbed that one. Um, I think I said the strawberries already. Got a red onion, some sweet potatoes, and some asparagus. Um, oh, and I also got, ignore the mess, sorry, uh, also got a spaghetti squash. They did not have organic, but I just got a regular spaghetti squash. I have some butternut squash downstairs still from the garden this summer, and I'm going to try and work with what I have. I'm allowed to eat quinoa, so I can do some of that, and then I can have any meat that I want, um, just plain meat, not like, you know, hot dogs and stuff, but... Anyways, that is my grocery haul and we will see what I can make with this this week. This is such a beautiful sight for me. All this fresh produce is washed and ready to go. And I am going to throw a spaghetti squash and one of my butternut squash into the oven just so I have those ready for just whenever I feel like eating them this week. So that's what I'm doing. So now it's time to get started chopping everything up and one of the biggest tips I can give you for incorporating more fresh fruits and vegetables into your diet is to set aside a chunk of time immediately after you grocery shop where you can get all of your produce washed and cut up and prepped for whatever you're going to use it for that week. So I kind of had an idea of how I wanted to use each vegetable. And so I just started chopping things up in the sizes that I wanted it to be. I can't tell you how many times I have planned on eating fresh vegetables for dinner. And then when I look at the actual situation, I see, oh, okay, well, I still have to wash that. And I have a sink full of dirty dishes. So in order to wash the vegetables, first I have to wash all the dishes and then clean the sink and then wash the vegetables and then peel them and then chop them. And then, you know, yada, yada, yada. So it, it's just, usually one of those times where I think, but if I just make pasta, then dinner will be ready in 20 minutes. So <laughs> it, 
it's one of those things where if you have it ready, you are so much more likely to use it because doing it this way, I could just throw everything directly into the pan while I'm cooking and it's already set to go. So it, it's a huge time saver, even though it costs you time up front, doing it all at once, getting it done, you'll really be on track to eat more healthy. Um, now these mini cucumbers, I know you don't have to peel them, but I, I have had sensitivities to like different waxes and things that the grocery store will put on their produce just to keep it fresh longer. And at one point in time, my tongue actually went numb. Like it, it was the weirdest thing. And I'm like, I don't know what they put on the outside of this vegetable because it was something I'd had a million times before, but I guess it was a different brand and they must have used a different wax and I don't know. So I'm just peeling them just so that I don't even have the chance of that happening again, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but at the time that I'm recording this, I did already eat them and they were fine. So <laughs> no allergic reactions this time. But um, I do like to keep my fresh produce in mason jars in the fridge. And not only do they get less soggy that way, but it also helps me to use them because having them in tall, clear glass containers, they're much more visible in the refrigerator. So when I open the fridge door, I see all these bright colors and I'm like, oh yeah, I have that. I should use that up. So it just helps me to use it better when I keep them in these mason jars. And I do like these um, one piece screw on lids that are reusable. Um, they're plastic and it's just easier for me than the two part lids when I'm just storing something temporarily in the fridge or something like that. So I do like those lids. I'll put a link down in the description box if you're looking for those. And um, they've been working out really nicely. Now at the time that I'm recording this video, I've been on this diet for almost a week now and I can tell you I feel so much better. I was having trouble with extreme fatigue and muscle pain and joint pain and um, dizziness and just all kinds of problems. And whenever I switch to this diet and I also have a few supplements that my doctor is giving me. Um, it just made a world of difference. I could not believe how much better I felt and how much or how quickly I felt that much better. So if you are struggling with chronic health problems, I highly encourage you to try to find a doctor who studies holistic nutrition and um, someone who uses applied kinesiology is preferable. And in, in my experience, those have been the doctors who have helped me the most. And if, if it's something you're not familiar with, um, you can Google it and it, I will admit it looks like it's complete voodoo. Like it looks like it should not work and it makes no sense, but it does work. I can tell you because I have had so much success with any doctor who's used that method to diagnose and help me. So, um, definitely get yourself checked out if you're having those issues, but it, I will give you some hope here because I can't believe how quickly I felt so much better just changing my diet and taking the supplements that my doctor recommended. So um, I will say, you know, the first day or so, I was actually not feeling like I was missing anything, even though there were foods I was trying to avoid. The way my life works, like, it's crazy. I have three kids. I have a husband who works full time and my kids are home all day. They're in cyber school. And so it's just busy. They're active in a whole bunch of different activities and we're active in our church. And so life is crazy. So a lot of times because I have a lot of food sensitivities to begin with, um, which I'm finding out now could be because of the limes, which I might be able to reverse some of those. So that's exciting. But, um, I've had so many food sensitivities for so long that I, would not be able to eat the same dinner as my family most of the time. So I would cook them something. And by the time I finished making their dinner and feeding them and cleaning up their dishes, 
I was just too tired to cook for myself. And so a lot of times I would just go to like gluten-free snacks, you know, I'd grab a bag of pretzels or a little oatmeal bar or something and just call that dinner because that's all I had the energy for. And so I really wasn't giving myself the nutrition that I needed. I was not eating right, even though the things that I was eating were quote unquote healthy things, they were snacks. They weren't meals. There wasn't enough protein. There just wasn't enough nutrition. And so the first day that I spent on this new diet, it was amazing because I was like actually making my own food a priority for the first time since I've been married. And (laughs) so it was really nice that I felt like I was being spoiled, like I was getting something fancy to eat, you know? So, so in the beginning, I'm like, this is fantastic. I could totally stay on this diet. This is great. Well, then it started to hit me emotionally whenever it was time for like watching a movie with my husband and the kids and we always eat snacks, you know? And I was like, wait, I I don't have snacks that are on my diet. I'm not allowed to eat anything that I have in my snack bin. And so that was difficult for me. And, you know, I ended up eating like cucumbers or something for my movie snack. And that was just not satisfying (laughs) when I wanted something salty and crunchy and, and I just was craving that snacky food, you know? So I have been experimenting this week. I found this awesome recipe for pepitas, which if you're not sure what those are, those are just pumpkin seeds with the outer shell removed. So they're little green seeds that come from pumpkins. And I have a recipe that I will post a link to in the description box. And it's so simple, but it's roasted pepita seeds. I just took raw seeds, put a little bit of olive oil and salt on them and roasted them in the oven for like 10, 15 minutes. And they are so good. I can't tell you how happy that made me to have a salty, crunchy snack to eat while I'm watching movies. So I'm gonna continue to experiment and I'm gonna try some other things too. Um, One of my food sensitivities is nuts, so I'm not doing any nuts right now. But I'm going to try with maybe chickpeas, um, see if I can make some crispy chickpeas and try different flavors and things like that. If you guys have any suggestions of some nice, crunchy, salty snacks that I can have that are grain-free, gluten-free, nut-free, no dairy, (laughs) you know, all the things that taste good, Um, (laughs) any suggestions for things like that, please put a comment um, down below the video and help me out here. But I will continue to explore and experiment and I will fill you in on any new ideas that I get. So this, in all of its glory, was my uh, first meal of my new diet. And this was, um, I ended up eating half of that butternut squash, and I had some canned turkey that I had already on the shelves that um, I just ate with it, and that was my dinner. And I literally took that entire tray into the living room and set it on my lap and was eating while watching a show with my husband. And he he was just looking at me like it was the most pathetic thing he'd ever seen, but... (laughs) It's okay. It all worked out. It was still good, whatever. So then um, the next morning, I ended up making some scrambled eggs and had some blueberries. And I did not eat that entire cup of blueberries, I promise you. But (laughs) I just didn't feel like dirtying an extra dish. So I just ate right out of the glass. If you don't know, we live on a 65-acre homestead, and we have our own chickens, so scrambled eggs in our house are so delicious. So that, I didn't feel like I was missing anything with that breakfast there. 
And now it is time to get lunch started. And isn't it like every time you go to cook something, your canister is empty and you have to refill it? I feel like that happens to me all the time. Is it just me or does that happen to you guys too? But anyways, I'm starting out with some quinoa and... I always rinse my quinoa before I cook it because if you don't, sometimes it can have a really bitter aftertaste. And if you rinse it really, really well before you cook it, you don't get that. So I'm just going to rinse this really quickly and then I will show you what I'm adding to it to give it some flavor. Okay, so remember that can of turkey I had for dinner last night? Um, I'm gonna use the broth from that can to cook my quinoa. Now I only have one cup of broth in there, so I'm just gonna use the other cup with water. I'll just fill it with water because I don't feel like opening a separate jar of turkey, honestly, but it still tasted really good. So it's half turkey broth, half water. And then I'm going to add um, some organic extra virgin olive oil just to give it a little bit of extra moisture. Then I'm throwing in some kosher salt and some garlic powder. And you can see I don't measure anything. I just eyeball everything. Some onion powder. Yeah, so I apologize if you're trying to follow the recipe. You're just going to have to watch how much I sprinkle in. <laughs> I don't have an actual recipe. Just threw a little bit of Italian seasoning in there. That is like, that combined with black pepper is usually my go-to seasoning mix. I'll have salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and Italian seasoning. I put that combination on so many different things. That's just one of my favorite flavor combinations. Now while that quinoa is cooking, I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of homemade salad dressing. So I'm using that same organic extra virgin olive oil. And when you're making your own dressing, you wanna do two parts oil to one part vinegar. So again, I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing everything because that's how I roll. So sorry, <laughs> that's who I am. <laughs> um, so I'm using this organic apple cider vinegar. It's raw vinegar, it has the mother in it. So it has that good bacteria, the probiotic bacteria. And that will also help to combat my Lyme's disease. So I'm going to put a little splash of that in there. And I'm just keeping this dressing super simple because I have so much seasoning in the quinoa already. I'm just going to do salt and pepper. Um, so it's literally just olive oil, apple cider vinegar, salt and pepper. And it was good. I was surprised at how good it was for not having any ingredients in it <laughs> practically. So you'll see me put this all together in a minute here. All right, time to put this lunch together. So I'm starting out with some kale and I'm gonna add some chicken. Now this is just chicken that I had canned already on the shelf. Um, adding some raspberries, cause I needed a tiny bit of sugar cause you know, <laughs> uh, life. So <laughs> adding a few raspberries, but hey, they're allowed on my diet so far. And then I'm gonna add some of this quinoa on there too. I didn't bother cooling it off. I just threw it on there warm cause why not, who cares? And it turned out really good. I liked that flavor combination a lot of the quinoa. So if you want to try that out, I highly recommend it. I'm just going to throw that quinoa right on top after I add this dressing. I wanted the dressing to get on the kale mostly because kale can sometimes be, like especially the kind you get at the grocery store, can sometimes be really stiff and hard and kind of hard to chew. So I like to have some kind of acid on it if I'm going to eat it raw. And so I wanted that to soak in for a minute to the kale before I added the other stuff on top. And like I said, the quinoa has so much flavor, I didn't need dressing on the quinoa really. So I'm just throwing that on the top and I'm going to enjoy a delicious, nutritious lunch. <laughs> and like I said, I was surprised at how full I was, you know, how satisfied I was eating this food, even though there are all these things that I'm not allowed to have 
I'm looking at this food as a special treat because I never pamper myself like this, especially for lunch. Half the time I don't even remember to eat lunch. <laughs> so um, it was really nice to have nutritious whole foods and really give myself something nourishing to eat. And with all that protein from the quinoa and the chicken, I actually wasn't starving after that. So that was really exciting for me. This is my dinner that night, and that is some um, broken up turkey burger with zucchini and mushrooms, and then I added some garlic and some olive oil, salt and pepper. Um, I probably did my usual seasoning blend. I honestly don't even remember, but probably did the salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. Oh, it looks like I threw some onions in there too. I forgot. I did throw some onions in there. That was delicious, and honestly, that was a very hearty meal for me. So even though there were no carbs in there, I still felt full, and it was really good. So I felt completely satisfied after that meal, so that was really nice. So this was my breakfast the next morning. I know it looks strange, but only in America are we so focused on certain foods being breakfast foods, you know? In other places, you just eat whatever for breakfast. Half the time I eat leftovers for breakfast anyway, so... I'm eating up the other half of that butternut squash and I'm having some cucumbers and a hard boiled egg for breakfast. Now for lunch on this day, I had yesterday's dinner as leftovers. So it was that um, the uh, turkey burger with the zucchini and mushrooms. This was for my dinner. I made, remember how I made that spaghetti squash earlier in the week? I um, scraped that out of the shell and used that as a base for my chili, which I had made um, out of deer meat, some tomato paste, some red kidney beans, and um, what else did I put in there? Garlic, and just some the seasonings that I use when I'm making tacos. So I used um, chili powder, cumin, um, onion, garlic, salt and pepper, and smoked paprika. So that's my go-to taco seasoning or chili seasoning. So I put that on top of the spaghetti squash and I did just add a little bit of salt to the spaghetti squash, nothing else before I put the chili on top of it. And that was absolutely delicious. And that was another meal that was really satisfying. All that protein from the deer meat and the beans really kept me full and I felt completely content at the end of the meal. I didn't feel like I was missing anything. So that was really exciting. And so if you are someone who is maybe having problems with some kind of autoimmune disease or for whatever reason you're trying to eat low carb and high protein, hopefully these recipes can help you guys out too. Um, because we need to help each other, dude. I mean, it is hard to eat this way. It really is. So if you guys have recipes you want to share with me, I would love to see them. Please leave them down in the comment section and um, keep following me because I'm going to keep posting more and more of these recipes as I experiment. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. It really helps me out. And I can't wait to see you in the next video when I get some more good ideas for you. And I have a, a bunch of other topics in my next videos coming up as well. Now the garden seasoning is approaching. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.